Hey, it's Sean from Vinnie Mac, and today I want to talk to you about running competitor Google search ads for your restoration or roofing business. This isn't just any podcast. This is your secret weapon for dominating the market. This is the Restoration Marketing Secrets Podcast, and this is your host, Sean McMean. This is a very uh, effective tactic in order to take advantage of the brands of other competitors in your market and uh, get a lower cost per click. And it's not against Google's terms of services. There are some important aspects, though, that you need to know about this from an ethical standpoint and uh, how to do this effective so you don't infringe on trademarks or things like that. If you've ever gone out to Google and you've searched for uh, your service, I'm sure that you see Google search ads out there. Now, if you go out to Google and you search for your brand name and you happen to see other competitors Uh, advertising under your brand name. These are competitor search ads and it's totally fine in Google's terms of service. You can go after any sort of keywords you want. Uh, There's some rules associated with that and we're going to dive into that here shortly. But if you are uh, a local company and you see people advertising for a brand name, you can run brand awareness campaigns, but this is basically reverse engineering that and running competitor campaigns. So yeah, think about uh, large franchises or large brands that are in your market. You can get your company to show up when somebody's searching for those uh, those brands or those companies. Uh, it's the same thing as if uh, somebody is searching for um, you know some large corporation. Uh, I won't name names here, but some large corporate franchises that um, are nationally known, you can get your company to show up for those in your local market by running competitor uh, search campaigns. And basically what you'll want to do is you want to, uh, it's going to give you the ability to get a lower cost per click by going against brand keywords versus generalized keywords. So let's say you have, you're going after water damage restoration or um, you're going after roofing installation company or roofing repair or those sort of generalized terms versus a competitor name or um, a, a large franchise name, you can you can get your ads to show up in there. Now, there's some risk with this. Some of the potential risks are that you get calls for that brand competitor and or that company. Those do not convert uh, to actual jobs for you. Or somebody's calling about about billing or f- trying to find somebody specifically. Uh, those are the real risk with this. But you will typically find that the cost per click for brand search campaigns versus generalized search campaigns is about a third of the cost as just running generalized uh, keyword campaigns. And so you will get some calls that are just not uh, people needing the services you offer and, and looking for that company. But these there's lead generation companies all over online, whether you're in restorations or rather in roofing that are running lead campaigns based on brands. And so if you go out there and do a search for your company and you happen to see another company's name in the paid ad section, uh, the chances are they're running a competitor campaign to take advantage of your brand. And it's perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with it. You can bid on any sort of keyword you want, but you you want to be, um, I will caution you that when you set up these ads, you can run off of any keyword you want, but do not put a trademarked or a copyrighted name in the ad itself or on the landing page or um, uh, where you're sending that uh, that traffic to. Uh, that is copyright infringement, and you could definitely get sued for doing that. That being said, anybody can show up for any keyword. You know, if you go out there and search for Amazon, you'll see other comp- companies. If you go out there and search for grocery store or uh, uh, Walmart or whatever, you'll see other companies advertising in there. Those are perfectly fine to do. So just make sure that you follow the rules. And if you're bidding on a keyword for a large national franchise or a large company, you do not include that keyword in your ad. You can put variations of that keyword. And so I'm not going to get into specifics on that exact tactic because uh, uh, I don't want to name names here, but you could put variations of that into the ad uh, copy and to the landing page uh, to get you a better quality score. Again, Don't pass off that you're that company if somebody calls you. If they're calling you and and asking for that company, say, no, that's not us, but we also provide that service. 
um, you know, that's perfectly ethical to do. Uh, you want to split test some variations in your ad copy and also the landing pages and leverage uh, extensions as well in those ads. So, uh, you know, you can run a competitor ad for competitor keywords, have that ad copy and that landing page be a little bit different for those competitor ads and take advantage of your five-star reputation, take advantage of your maps profile, all of those things uh, in order to to get a, a better cost per click on that specific ad. And then localize the ads. Make sure that uh, if you're you're running ads for the Chicago area, put that in the uh, in the ad copy, put that on the landing page, you know? And so um, those are all powerful ways to get, uh, combat the ever increasing cost of Google search ads right now in, in restoration and in, in roofing. Um, the costs are going up across the board and you can use competitor ads to take advantage of large brand profiles to drive down those costs. And uh, some, sometimes people are just looking for any company to solve that need. Um, and so this is a very effective strategy to, to combat the increased costs and take advantage of getting your company out there and increasing your visibility. So if you have any questions, you can always reach us at restorationmarketing.com. And hopefully this was helpful for you on setting up competitor search ad campaigns. You've been listening to the Restoration Marketing Secrets Podcast. Sean's not here to just talk the talk. He's walked the walk. With a track record of helping over 70 damage restoration companies and engaging in over 500 conversations with industry owners, he's seen it all. From digital marketing triumphs to the most ingenious growth hacks, he's got the keys to the kingdom, and he's sharing them with you. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to like, rate, and review. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, for more, hit the website at restorationmarketing.com. See you next time on the Restoration Marketing Secrets Podcast.